Let me hear the church say hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you to our covenant service for the month of January in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I remind you that a covenant is between two parties? That is the divine and the human. On the divine side, that is the side of God. When he makes a covenant with us, it's a faithful God. And God will be faithful to you this year in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll find the promises of God fulfilled. And your life will be a happy life. Amen. Happier life. Amen. Great life. Amen. A greater life. Amen. Looks like you are not ready for covenant. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. On the side of God is faithfulness. On our side is obedience. As we seek about covenant with God... He makes a pact with us. He makes an agreement with us. He lays down the condition and he says, I'm going to bless you and I will bless you. Yeah. And while he'll be faithful on his side, we are going to be obedient on our side. And the kind of obedience we're talking about is not a lip service obedience. It's not a superficial obedience. Number one, it's a prompt obedience. As you hear the word of God, you hear the promise of God. Immediately, you take that promise to the Lord and you stand on that promise and claim that promise. And then you tell the Lord, I'm going to offer to the Lord, number one, prompt obedience. Number two is personal obedience. It's not like I'm waiting for him, I'm waiting for her. If she is obedient to the Lord, then I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. No, it's something personal that this year, your blessing personal, your promotion personal, and every fulfillment of the word of God in your life, personal in Jesus' name. And therefore you come to the Lord as we are kind of concluding the covenant Sundays. And you're saying, Lord, I know you are going to be faithful. And I am going to be obedient, we're prompt obedience, with personal obedience, with practical obedience. You see, there are people, I obey, I obey. And I'm saying, show me the evidence and show me the proof that you're obedient. Because their lives in the new year is not different from the life in the old year. There must be something positive, something tangible, something practical that we put in place and we say, Lord, look at that this year. Every moment of my life, Every day of my life and every week of my life and anywhere I find myself, there will be prompt obedience and there will be personal obedience. There will be practical obedience unto the Lord, to the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. May the Lord find you faithful. Somebody shout Amen. amen. But you know, the obedience we carry out without prayer it's not enough because that will be done in the action in the strength in the skill in the power of the flesh if there's no prayer and therefore before you can really obey the law to his satisfaction there must be prayer we're talking about prayerful obedience i get on my knees i say lord here is your word can I obey your word without grace, without your spirit, without your power, without your enablement? Of course you cannot. And therefore, the obedience we're carrying out this year, every moment of the time and every, every place we go is going to be prayerful obedience. And then it is peaceful obedience. It's not an obedience I say, I'm obeying God. I'm pushing down everybody. I'm obeying God. I'm stepping on every toe. I am I'm obeying God. I am contradicting everything that is orderly, everything that is well organized. And I say, I'm obeying God. I don't care what the people feel, what the people think. I'm going to push them down. I'm going to destroy what they are doing. Uh -uh. It must be 
peaceful obedience a kind of obedience that brings peace to your own heart that you have the assurance in your heart you are walking the way of the lord there's no conflict there's no fight there's nothing you know, uh, that brings disunity or conflict in the in the house of god or in your own family it is also going to be a proper obedience proper obedience when god says sacrifice isaac you're not going to sacrifice ishmael when God says go to Nineveh, you're not going to Tashish. You're not just moving. You're not just obeying. It's going to be proper obedience that will say, Lord, here am I this year. That which you command, that which you demand, and that which you specify and uh, prescribe, that is what I am going to do. And it's going to be persevering obedience. And when you sometimes, you know, when you're obeying the Lord, as you are walking the way sometimes you get tired but you say i'll take another step i'll preach another message i'll sing another song i'll pray another prayer i'll witness to another person you are talking to the lord you are saying lord this year i'm going to be obedient to the lord and the goodness of god will be manifest in your life in jesus name i'm waiting for new covenant here amen I want you to close your eyes and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I come in covenant relationship with you. If you're not born again, you can surrender your life to the Lord Jesus right now. And say, Lord, I'm coming to this partnership, into this part, into this agreement with you. Lord, I surrender. I surrender my life. I give my life completely unto you. And as you do that, it's making a covenant with you. And that covenant will result into fruitfulness in your life, will result into power in your life, will result into every good thing the Lord has promised to do. If you are born again already, lay your life on the altar and say, Lord, here am I. This year, I'm going to be obedient to your word with prompt obedience. I'm going to be obedient with personal obedience. Whatever others do, that's not my concern. Others may, but I cannot personal obedience i'm going to have practical obedience i'm going to do it something practical something tangible something that shows evidence that i'm a real child of god prayerful 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 you want to bring the power the power to be the strength to be the skill to be you want to bring that into your life by saying lord you will help me you will grant me the grace and whatever i find difficult you will simplify for me it's going to be peaceful obedience you are not fighting this year you are not in a battle against anybody against the church this year you are saying lord it's a peaceful obedience it's proper obedience whatever you demand whatever you ask that's exactly what i'm going to keep i'm going to keep my life i'm going to keep my substance i'm going to give everything i have i'm not going to grudge you and say because of this because of that i'm not going all the way you want to totally obey the lord in such a proper way that the lord will say that's right that's right that's exactly what i was asking from you and it's going to be persevering obedience persevering obedience whatever other people do however the slope or the steep may be climbing the mountain oh lord i'm going to do exactly what you have called me to do and the blessings of the lord will be mighty permanent upon your life in jesus name that blessing will continue to increase it will not stop today it will not stop in january till the end of the year that blessing will continue in your life in jesus name new covenant new year new creature amen Father, we thank you for this day and for this hour. We thank you because you brought us into covenant relationship with you. And Lord, we pray that your power will work mightily and unhindered in every life this year in Jesus' name. I pray for my brothers and sisters, my sons and my daughters. Lord, I'm praying that this day will be another opening of the gate into the avalanche of the blessings of God in Jesus' name abundance in every life 
power in every life productivity in every life progress in every life and lord we pray that the power of heaven will work in every life even from this moment in jesus name all your mountains removed all your challenges resolved all your sicknesses healed and all your needs are met in jesus name this year for you for me for us together will be a happier year a prosperous year and will be a fulfilling year for everyone in jesus name lord open the floodgates of heaven upon everyone and pour out and pour out and pour out your blessings upon every life in jesus name i thank you because i know you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray let me have another amen let the new testament church shout another amen god has blessed you already you can see that we're coming to second chronicles chapter 11 second chronicles chapter 11 here today we discover a key the key that helps us and the key that moves us into the supernatural blessing of the lord this is the key that will give you peace of mind this is the key that will open the gate of power the gate of prosperity and the great of the gate of fulfillment into your life and this year to be so in jesus name i'm coming to second chronicles chapter 11 verse 4 second chronicles chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 4 thus says the lord ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren return every man to his house for this sin is done of me underline those words this sin is done of me when there's confusion in your life you want to hear whether this is coming from the lord or not when there is a crossroad and you don't know where to go you want to know which one is coming from the lord when pressures are coming from the right from the left from the front from the back and from the center you want to know is this of you and the lord says here for this sin is done of me and they obeyed the words of god of the lord and returned from going against jeroboam uh, let's come to first kings chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 24 first kings chapter 12 and we're looking at verse 24 it says in verse 24 thus says the lord you shall not go up nor fight against your brethren the children of israel return every man to his house here is what you are looking for for this thing is from me for this thing is from me the secret that opens the way for us and the secret that clears every confusion is that sentence is that little scene in the middle of the verse there that says this sin is from me they hearken therefore to the word of the lord and return to depart according to the word of the lord according to the word of the lord i'm looking at the word of god with you on divine appointment for god's new covenant people divine appointment for god's new covenant people the appointment of god the provision of god and the providence of god when he says this sin is from me come to job chapter 23 in job chapter 23 we're reading from verse 14 job chapter 23 reading here from verse 14 and remember what we're looking at this sin is from me job chapter 23 verse 14 for he performs the sin that is appointed for me job knew that there is something in the mind of god 
there is something in the record of God and that is appointed for me and he says he performs the thing that's appointed for me and many such things are with him many such things are with him and so as you come to the new year and you understand that whatever is happening whatever is going on before you raise your voice, before you raise your hand, before you move your leg, before you do anything at all, find out, you see, performing what has been appointed for me that I cannot understand, that I've not tried to even investigate. If I listen to him, if I go to him, would he tell me this thing? is from me proverbs chapter 21 in proverbs chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 30 proverbs chapter 21 verse 30 there is no wisdom no understanding no counsel against the lord whatever he has planned there is no wisdom from any man from any community from society Whatever he has ordained for your life, there is nothing, nothing in the sky, nothing on land, and nothing in the sea that can change that because there is no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel against the Lord. I want you to, rem to remind yourself once again, this thing is for me. And as you go through life this year, something happened before you are startled, before you are surprised, before you allow any sorrow to grip your heart. Remember, this thing is from me. And you understand, as you read the story of many people in the Bible, they didn't understand, they missed out just that thing. And because they missed out just not seeing, they got into unnecessary conflict in their life. Think about Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. All that Jacob had, the sin is for me. If Esau had realized that, it will not be kind of a sin. I'm going to destroy Jacob to start with. If this sin is from him, you cannot destroy it. And so the problem of Esau, why he didn't have peace of mind? The problem of Esau, why he didn't have contentment in his life? He didn't realize what happened to Jacob, what Jacob had. This thing is from me. Think about Joseph and his brethren. When Joseph said, I have a dream. And then he related that dream. And all those brethren, they were they were ready to fight and they were ready to destroy Joseph you know why they didn't understand this thing is from me you come on in history and you're looking at Moses and you're looking at Aaron and Miriam and Aaron and Miriam they began to grumble they began to murmur and they began to criticize I about this Moses I about this Moses you know what they didn't realize God the Almighty went to the backside of the desert and then he chose Moses and he called Moses. They didn't realize the choice of Moses and the ministry of Moses. This thing is from me. That's why eventually Miriam became a leprous woman. There was a time when Korah Desan and Abiram, when they rose up and they said, What's the matter with Aaron? What's the matter with the priesthood? And eventually they began to criticize the whole priesthood. You know what they missed out? They missed out that little sentence. This thing is from me. That's how the ground uh, opened up and swallowed Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. All that conflict and all the fight between Saul and David. When God said, I have found a man after my own heart. And he chose that young man, David. And Saul was ready to fight. And he left his ministry. He left the throne. All he was doing is to just make sure that he will defeat and destroy David. You know why? Saul did not realize this thing is from me Solomon the wise man that wise man missed out this one thing this thing is for me I'm going to read that to you in first Kings chapter 
11. First Kings chapter 11. Even Solomon missed that out. I pray you'll not miss this out in your life. If you miss it out, your life will be a series of a series of conflicts, a series of fighting, a series of lost battles. Look at this in the First Kings chapter eleven. I'm reading from the start to one. First Kings chapter eleven, reading from the start to one, and said to Jeroboam, "Take thee ten pieces." This is even before Solomon died. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rent the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and give thee ten tribes, give ten tribes unto thee. Solomon should have realized this sin is from him. And because this sin is from the Lord, there's no use fighting. Look at verse 40. Verse 40. Uh, so, yes, verse 40. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. Why? He didn't take it in. He didn't understand. This thing is from me. In your life, every step you take, every day you live, if you don't come to that understanding, this thing is from me, you'll be fighting unnecessary battle. You will leave the project of your life. You will leave the progress of your life. You leave the profit of your life. And then you go on a tangent. You go up and you're fighting something that will show me fighting. And what's the problem between Jeroboam and Rehoboam? The problem is the sin is for me. He didn't know. That is, uh, Rehoboam did not know that this is of the Lord. And therefore, when Jeroboam was put upon ten tribes, he was ready to fight. And God said, don't fight. This thing is from me. As you go through this year, the hand of the Lord will be upon your life. The promises of the Lord will go before you. And the angels of the Lord will go before you everywhere you go in Jesus' name. But we're going to realize something in whatever is happening, whether you think that is negative, whether you think that is oppressive, whether you think that is cruel, whether you think that should not be whatever you think, leave what you think aside and remember this thing is from me. And as you realize that everything that happens to you will turn into a blessing. Every challenge will turn into a blessing. This thing is from me. Divine appointment for God's new covenant people. Divine appointment for God's new covenant people. There are three things we're going to look at. Number one, fight not. Number one, fight not. Number two, fear not. Number two, fear not. Number two, fear not. Number three, follow on. Follow on. Don't stop. Follow on. Something crossed the way. Don't worry about that. This is for me. Follow on. Something is crossing your path and it wants to make you afraid. Fear not. Follow on. There's a pressure that is coming. And you're thinking this pressure on this mountain will not allow you to finish well. Don't worry about that. You will finish well. And this year will finish well. There's not going to be any disaster in your life for this new year. And there's not going to be any, any unresolvable problem that, you know, any knot that I cannot untie. Nothing like that this new year. Follow on. Point number one, fear not. This thing is from me. Fear not, this thing is from me. Point number two, fight not. Number one, fight not, this thing is from me. Number two, fear not, the treasure is still much. Thy treasure is still much. Count your blessings and see. This is what God has for you. Don't fight, don't fear. Thy treasure is still much. Point number three, follow on. Triumph belongs to the meek. Follow on. Triumph belongs to the meek. 
follow on keep on following keep on walking keep on moving keep on climbing and keep on striving and keep on praying and keep on doing what the lord has called you to do fear not fight not follow on triumph belongs to the meek we're coming to number one point number one fight not this sin is from me we're coming back to that second chronicles chapter 11 second chronicles chapter 11 i'm reading here from verse 1 and when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin and hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against Israel, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to himself, Rehoboam. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the all of Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, Thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, return every man every man every man to his house for this thing is done of me and they obeyed the words of the lord and returned from going against jeroboam as you look at the lives of people who have come before us here is what you discovered they understood although the hands of a foe of an enemy the, the hand of a stranger might be involved in this but ultimately it's god you see them it is god permitting them it is god allowing them to do what they have done and so they are not going to fight against man and they're not going to quarrel or challenge any man that's why they were dumb that's why they were quiet that's why they were silent that's why they will not pass any comment they knew this thing is from me look at genesis chapter 45 genesis chapter 45 i'm reading from verse 5 genesis chapter 45 reading from verse 5 now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither do not fight with yourself that she sold me hither for god did send me before you to preserve life joseph knew the sin is of god if god did not allow that you could have done nothing if god did not have a purpose in your selling me to egypt you could have done nothing i look at the greater hand i look at the bigger heart i look at the higher love and i look at the greater purpose of god that god allowed this because it fits into his plan for me it fits into his project for me and therefore whatever his brothers did even to the point of selling him he said it wasn't you it wasn't you god sent me before you to preserve life look at verse 7 and god sent me before you god sent me not you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance so now it was not you he said that again so now it was not you Reuben, Issachar, Judah, and the rest of them, you understand? It's not what you did. You were just fulfilling the plan of God without knowing this sin is from him. So now it was not you that sent me here, but God, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh think about that and lord to all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of egypt it was god and let's come to isaiah chapter 28 and then you will understand how god works 
there is not a day that passes your life that God is not involved and there is not a challenge that passes your life that God is not involved and there is not an item of anything accomplished in your life that God is not involved it is God it is God this thing is for me fight not fight not it might appear that you know i need to do something so that this thing will not continue i need to do something so that this and this will not happen again remove your hand from there remove your mouth from there and remove your plan from there this thing is from him look at chapter 28 verse 29 of isaiah isaiah chapter 28 verse 29 this also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts. What's that in your life? This also cometh forth from the house, from the Lord of hosts. What's that challenge in your life? God has permitted that this also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in walking. Actually, he tells us in Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46 and i'm reading here from verse 10 i say chapter 46 verse 10 declaring the end from the beginning he knows the end of your life he knows the outcome of your life he knows the purpose he has purpose for your life and he declares that end from the beginning and between the beginning and the end he orchestrates everything that happens so that you will get to that expected end i'm looking at somebody there you are getting to the expected end no disappointment i said no disappointment in your life you know you have peace of mind you have rest in your soul every little thing that happens and then rubs you the other way and then you want to rise up and fight it and says no sit down don't fight about anything because he calls, he tells us, he's declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done. The things you have not yet known, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. All the plans of God in your life will be fulfilled. All the pleasure of the Lord in your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Anything that happens, negative or positive, anything that happens coming from sinners or coming from believers, anything that happens coming from the church or coming from your place of work, God will weave everything together and land you on your destiny in Jesus' name. Verse 11 calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Maybe the person is going to execute the counsel of God in your life. Maybe it's not in your district. Maybe it's not in your zone. Maybe it's not in your city. Wherever they are, God will bring them. If they are angels, God will send them. They will go before you. They'll make the way plain before you in Jesus' name. Yea, I have spoken it and I will bring it to pass. In your life, I have spoken it, I will bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. There's joy in your heart now. There is satisfaction in your heart now. Something good is going to happen. This year, something better is going to happen. Hacking unto me, ye stout hearted that are far from righteousness. He's calling the people who are far away, he's telling them, Come, the Lord is going to do something, something beyond your expectation. Something beyond your expectation. Scholarship will come where you do not expect. The help will come where you do not expect. Lack of money in your family will not hinder what God has proposed he will do. He has all the money in the world that sin will be done. 
in Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 42. Deuteronomy chapter 1. We're reading from verse 42. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight. Go not up, neither fight. You know, it's not only the case of Rehoboam and Jeroboam. The Lord has been in this business of carving out the way, mapping out the way. Even from of old, he told these uh, children of Israel now, Moses, go and tell them, go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest she be smitten before your enemies. And look at this, it says, I have a plan for you, but you're not even obeying me now, and I am not among you now. But I don't want you to be destroyed because even though I'm not, I'm not among you now, I still have a purpose destined for you. But Slider, God is still on your side. And he will bring you back in Jesus' name. For the moment you are drifting away, and for the moment the Lord is not with you, and you are not with him, and he says, plan suspended, progress suspended promise suspended i'm waiting for you i'm waiting for you come back and we can start again today the plan of god will start again in your life the power of god will start again in your life look at chapter 2 chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 4 deuteronomy chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 4 and command thou the people saying Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau. Look at this, look at this, look at this one. You are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Uh, there's something here, there's something here. You see Esau, he had his own portion that God ordained for him. And Jacob had his own portion that God ordained for Jacob. But Esau did not know. He was looking in the wrong direction. Now the children of Israel were passing by. And they were going to pass the land of Esau. Look at what God said in that verse 4. He said, even these people of Esau, they will be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourself, therefore Esau is afraid of you, the people of Esau are afraid of you, take heed unto yourself, meddle not with them, they are afraid of you, meddle not of them, the people you are afraid of, God will command them, meddle not with them. You didn't hear that one. I said, the people you are afraid of, God will command them, meddle not with her. It says, for I will not give you of their land, Israel. I will not give you of the land of Esau. No, not so much as a foot breast, because I have given it to Mount Seir, unto Esau, for a possession. Is Simon protecting the possession of Esau? If Esau had known that, that God was also protecting his property, and he's telling Esau, he's telling Jacob, don't fight against the people of Esau because I'm not going to give you their land. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will preserve you. You must realize as you go through life, whatever is happening, this scene is for me. Look at your life. Think of your life. Think about the things you cry about. And think about the things you are weeping about. This scene is for me. And when that scene has accomplished the purpose for which God allowed it, that scene will vanish away. I said that scene will vanish away. Acts chapter 5, verse 39. Acts chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 39. But if this be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. Here Gamaliel told the Sanhedrin, 
with the leadership of religious Israel. He said, leave these people alone. The sin is of me. The sin is of God. If this is of God, you cannot overthrow it. And I'm saying that your life is of God. Your place is of God. Your position is of God. Your prosperity is of God. And everything the Lord has ordained for you, nobody can fight and succeed because they'll be fighting against God. And you will not fight against God. I will not fight against God. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23, verse 9. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23. I'm reading here from verse 9. In verse 9, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23, verse 9. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees, part arose, of the Pharisees, part arose, and strove, saying, we find no evil in this man. But if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. If this sin is coming from heaven, if this sin is of God, let us not fight against God. Look at verse 11. And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. Be of good cheer, Paul. Be of good cheer. Who is there? I said who is there? Be of good cheer. Put the right name there now. For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. I accept that. I believe that. The promise of God is for you. And you will succeed in what the Lord has promised in Jesus' name. Now you must underline this in your Bible. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says in verse 28, and we know this year you will know. In your life, you will know. In your family, you will know. As you pray, you will know. I'm waiting for you. As you pray, you will know. And we know that some things work together for good. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Praise God, praise God for the believer this year. All things will work positively in your life in Jesus' name. All things, all things, rainfall, sunshine, all things, dry season, rainy season, all things. In the midst of your friends and the midst of your foes, all things. When it appears there is nothing, and when it appears there is surplus, all things. When enemies are overing around, and when friends are helping everywhere, all things will work for God in your life. All things will work for the better in your life. It says, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And the people that love God are they in the house today. I said that in the house today. People that love God, where are they? Beloved of God, beloved of God, beloved of God. All things will work for good in your life in Jesus' name. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Let's come back now to Second Chronicles. Now you understand, fight not. All things will work for good in your life. Fight not, this sin is from me. We're coming back to Second Chronicles chapter 11. And I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Point number 2. Fear not, thy treasure is still much. Fear not, thy treasure is still much. We're looking at uh, Second Chronicles chapter 11. And I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Speak unto Rehoboam the son of Solomon, 
the king of judah underline that the king of judah the king of judah and to all israel in judah and benjamin saying that he is your some people that came from israel and he joined judah but in talking about the tribes the tribes that uh, rehoboam arch they were judah and benjamin and they all came under the name judah now it's saying verse 4 thus says the lord ye shall not go up to fight nor fight against your brethren return every man to his house for this sin is of me. Help me repeat that one. One, two, three, go. Let's say, say it again. For this sin is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord and returned from going against Jeroboam. The second point is fear not. Thy treasure is still much. Let's ask ourselves. What did Rehoboam have left? He had Judah and under that Judah, Benjamin. And he says, you still have Judah with you. Your treasure is still much. Why do we say that your treasure is still much? Psalm 87. In Psalm 87, I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 87, reading from verse 2. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Look at that. As you think about Judah, you think about Jerusalem because Jerusalem was the capital in Judah. As you think about Jerusalem, you think about Zion because Zion was the place and the, and the palace of the king. And he's saying, Rehoboam, fear not, your treasure is still much because where you are, Zion, where you are, Jerusalem, where you are, Judah, the Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the, all the dwellings of Jacob. Where you put everything together, belonging to the other side in value. They are not up to Judah. And when you think about Judah, and you think about all the other tribes, all those other tribes in which in prophecy and in the profit they make to the rest of the world judah is higher and greater than all the ten tribes put together look at verse 3 there in verse 3 it says glorious things are spoken of thee o city of god Rehoboam, what you have is much, what you have is great. Count your blessings and see what the Lord has done. Look at verse 5. And of Zion it shall be said, This and that man was born in her. Even to be born in Judah, even to be born in Zion, it was a great privilege. And so Rehoboam, fear not, your treasure is still much. When Jeroboam has taken what has been given to him, what is led is to fulfill all the prophecies that were given to Abraham and even Jesus Christ is to come out of that tribe of Judah. It says of Zion, it shall be said, this and that man was born in her and the highest himself and the highest himself is talking about the almighty god is talking about the ancient of this is talking about the most high god and the highest himself shall establish her thank god the lord will establish you somebody there i'm saying the lord will establish you fear not thy treasure is still much look at psalm 132 psalm 132 i'm reading from verse 13 Psalm 132, reading from verse 13, for the Lord has chosen Zion. Rehoboam, don't worry about what has gone to the other side. Count your blessing. And my brother, I'm telling you today, my sister, I'm telling you today, count your blessing. You will see that you still have much. Thank God I have much. I have Jesus. I have much. I have all the promises, I have much. I have answered prayer, I have much. I have miracles, I have much. I have joy, that my joy may be full. I have much. I have heaven, I have much. You have much. I said you have much. In Basatina, then for the Lord has chosen Zion. 
he has desired it for his habitation. Ah, look at that. Even God is going to abide with them. Even God is going to live with them. And he's not going to live in Samaria. He's not going to live in Damascus. He's not going to live in any of those other places. Even the Lord himself has desired deed for his habitation. This is my rest. Tell me. This is my rest, say it aloud, forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. That's the privilege, and that is the provision, and that is the treasure that Rehoboam had, for I will abundantly bless her provision. I will abundantly bless your provision. And I will satisfy her, her poor, with bread. I will also clothe her, her priest with salvation. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that something? Salvation is going to come out of Judah, out of Jerusalem. Salvation is going to come through Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem of Judah. The salvation of the whole world is going to come from that one, the Messiah born in Bethlehem of Judah and he says I will close her priest with salvation and her saints shall shout for joy her saints shall shout for joy you have testimony I said you have testimony this uh, coming Thursday rise up and say something God has done for you because between now and Thursday that expectation will arrive. That thing the Lord has promised will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And look at Joel, look at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Fear not, thy treasure is still much. Joel chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Where, where, where in your life the Lord will do great things? When, now, this year, great things in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 22, be not afraid, ye beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bears her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, tell me, be glad then, tell me. The concentration is what fell unto Rehoboam, fear not. That treasure is still much. And when you think about how God spoke about Jerusalem, how you spoke about Zion, and then he says, Be glad ye children of Zion. When you think about that, you see that there will be no regrets in your life. There will be no sorrow in your life. Why did I lose that? You didn't lose anything as such. Because what remains is a treasure from heaven. I say what remains in your life is a treasure from heaven. Be glad there ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come now for you. The rain, the former rain is coming. And the latter rain is coming. In the first month, the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vines shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worms, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worms, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God and that dwelleth that dwelt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed
Remember, 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 he's talking to the children of Zion. Remember, he's talking to the people of Judah. Remember, he's talking to you, the believers. Any believer here today? I said, any believer there today? The people of God shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people once again shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh from Jerusalem the Holy Ghost was poured out and through that it came to Judea and through that to Samaria and through that to Cornelius house for a blessing for the rest of the world you'll be a blessing for the rest of your community and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. The statue, and it shall come to pass. This will happen. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For where? For tell me. For say it aloud. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance Rehoboam that's what fell under 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 Rehoboam Rehoboam be not afraid thy treasure is still much and all the sorrow you brought in here today oh pastor look at this one look at this one thy treasure is still much your treasure is inexhaustible count your blessings and you will see what the Lord will do in your life even from today in Jesus name for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call blessings upon your life look at Matthew Matthew chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 6 Matthew chapter 2 we're reading from verse 6. It says in verse 6, I'm now Bethlehem in the land of Judah. In the land of Judah. Rehoboam, this is under, under your territory. Great things are happening. And under the territory and the ministry of this church this year, great, great things will be happening in Jesus' name. Everyone associate, associated with deeper life. This year, great things will meet you at every corner of the road on the street great things will happen in your home great things will happen in your family great things will happen our treasure is much look at verse 6 there thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah thou art not the least and thou art not the least of the prophet of the prayer of the princes among the princes of Judah for out of thee shall come a governor, shall come a ruler, shall come the master, shall come the Messiah that shall rule my people Israel. Look at chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 44. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Rehoboam did not see that treasure hid in his field. And he was about to go out and fight. He was to fight for the other ten tribes so he can have Samaria, so he can have Damascus, so he can have Issachar, so he can have all those other things. And God said, why are you worrying yourself? Why do you want to spend your strength for nothing? Stay where you are. Every blessing will flow unto you there. It says, which when a man has found, he hide it. And for the joy thereof, goes and selleth all that he has and buys that field. That means you get, you have, what Jesus has provided, everything in Jesus you are going to have. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, 
reading from verse 3 is our treasure and we have him and once we have him we have all things you have jesus you have salvation i said you have jesus you have salvation you have jesus you have healing you have jesus you have deliverance you have jesus you have sanctification you have Jesus, you have immersion baptism in the Holy Ghost. You have Jesus, you have all provision and all blessing. You have Jesus, you have ancestral prayer. Because everything you ask in the name of Jesus, he will grant unto you. Colossians chapter 2 verse 3, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Christ Coming out of Judah, in Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Christ, in Jesus, in our Savior and Messiah, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. I am complete in him. I said, I am complete in him. Osmond, what the doctor said is not there. God will do a creative miracle. Why? What the doctor said is impossible. God will do a creative miracle. And the son, daughter, they said the brain is not there. Don't say that again. The brain will be become the highest IQ in Jesus name because you are complete in him I am complete in him say it and let the angels hear let the world hear let Satan hear Ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. I rejoice with you because now you are complete. I said now you are complete. Look at Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us how many things all things all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature what else am i looking for ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust i have escaped all their corruption i said i have escaped all their corruption there's a miracle every day in your life if you believe that it will happen yeah. romans chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 32 romans chapter 8 reading from verse 32 reading from verse 32 romans chapter 8 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all delivered him all for us all so that he can be all your iniquity he can be all your sin and carry all your sins away and give you justification and give you salvation and give you new life and give you an inheritance coming from heaven he delivered him for us all how shall he not with him not apart from him with him with him also freely give us also freely give me also freely give you all things are available for you fear not thy treasure is still much revelation chapter 21 revelation chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 1 revelation chapter 21 reading from verse 1 and i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and i john saw the holy city tell me the name of that holy city 
tell me, tell me. New Jerusalem, Rehoboam, even heaven is named after what is in your territory. Heaven, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and he will be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And it that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he, that, and he said unto me, It is done. In your life, it is done. In our church, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit. He that overcometh shall inherit. You have an inheritance. I have an inheritance. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. And he shall be my son. And he shall be my son. Fear not. Thy treasure is still much. This year, the treasure of the Lord will bring fulfillment in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Second Chronicles chapter 11. Second Chronicles chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 4. And then we go to verses 16 and 17. Follow on, triumph belongs to the meek. Follow on, triumph belongs to the meek. In Second Chronicles chapter 4, reading from the second part of verse 11. Second part of verse 4, rather, verse 4. For this thing is of me and they obeyed the words of the Lord and returned from going against Jeroboam I want you to look up here for a moment you see these people thousands of them they followed Rehoboam and they were determined we are going to fight it out they were determined we're going to smash everything and then God said don't do that fear not the treasure is still much on your side fight not this thing is from me and so they dropped their weapons and with meekness they now went back and they were not going to fight anymore all the things they had planned all the things they had purpose they said the Lord has spoken and because the Lord has spoken, they became meek. And when you are meek in the sight of the Lord, blessings will flow on your side. Look at verse 16. And after them, and after them out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem without fighting without fighting those who wanted to seek the lord they came to jerusalem to sacrifice unto the lord god of their fathers so they strengthened the kingdom of judah strengthen what remains strengthen what you have strengthen your faith and strengthen the power of the holy ghost in your life the things that remain in you they strengthen and they made rehoboam the son of solomon strong three years for three years 
they watch in the way of David and Solomon. Follow on. Let's look at Hosea. Follow on. Hosea chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 3. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. And we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord. And we shall know the blessings of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the provision of the Lord. And we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord is going forth as prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain at the latter and the former rain unto the earth. The Lord's blessing will follow you even throughout this year in Jesus' name. You are going to inherit all things. There's no need in your life that will not be met. Say amen if you believe. But you know, like the people of Rehoboam did, there's one quality he wants in our lives. He wants us to be meek because in that meekness, every blessing, every treasure, every provision from the Lord will flow from everywhere and flow into your life, flow into your family, and flow into your place of work. This year is a happy year. It's a prosperous year. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. If you believe that, those words of Jesus, you're not going to fight for anything. You're not going to struggle for anything. You're not going to push another person down to have your way. Because actually, all the blessings and the resources of the earth they belong to the meek. It says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We're coming to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will have rest. In my soul, I have rest. In my spirit, I will have rest. Inside my body, I will have rest. In my family, I will have rest. Spiritually, you will have rest. Materially, you will have rest. Emotionally, you will have rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek. I don't fight, so you don't fight. I don't fear, so you don't fear. I am meek. That's what the Lord said. That's what the Master said. And He said, if you're going to inherit with me, you must follow me because I am meek and lowly in heart. For ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Every weight and every load of the enemy is taken off your shoulder. All those difficulties and disastrous things, they're taken away from you in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 22. Galatians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 22. For the fruit of the Spirit. What shows the evidence of the Spirit in our lives? The proof of the Spirit in our lives. The fruit, the outcome of the Spirit in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Tell me what follows. Say it aloud. Meekness, meekness. If the spirit is there, you'll be meek. No fighting, no conflict, no debate, and no strife. Meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. For they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections and 
the lost. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 12. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, by wells of mercies. That's how to live the new year. By wells of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, tell me, meekness, and long suffering. And the Lord will effect all his good purpose in your life, in your family, in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, from what? From anything that brings fear, purge yourself. Anything that, bring, anything that brings a fight, conflict, contention, put yourself. Anything that brings the attitude of struggling and debate, put yourself. If a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work, flee also youthful laws, and follow righteousness, amen. amen. Faith, amen. amen. Charity, peace with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Verse 24 The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto, gentle unto all men apt to teach patient look at verse 25 in meekness is structuring those that oppose themselves preachers don't fight parents don't fight their children leaders don't fight the members in meekness is structuring those that oppose themselves our pastors are going to be mightily blessed this year in Jesus' name. Our parents are going to be mightily blessed this year in Jesus' name. Our leaders, our workers are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. All our members are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Even the people that just come, they're coming for the first time, they'll carry the blessings of God away home. It says, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preferential will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Look at Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. Zephaniah chapter 2, reading from verse 3. In Zephaniah chapter 2, Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all the meek of the earth. You know, meekness makes us to seek the Lord. It says, Seek ye the Lord, all the yield the meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. Don't say, I'm meek already, I've got enough meekness. Seek to be meek more and seek to be soft more and seek to be gentle more and seek to be lowly more. Seek meekness, it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. The Lord's rod of wrath will not be upon your life. Goodness for you this year. Psalm 147. Psalm 147. I'm reading from verse 6. 147, verse 6. The Lord lifteth up the meek. You didn't hear that one. The Lord lifteth up the meek. This year, there's a lifting up for you. He casteth the wicked down 
to the ground I will not be wicked I will not be cast down I will be meek I will be lifted up Psalm 25 verse 9 25 verse 9 The meek will he guide in judgment The meek will he teach his way you will not make a mistake that will crush your life. You will not make a mistake that will ruin your prospects. The Lord will see to it that he guides you. And he will teach you in the way you ought to go in Jesus' name. All the parts of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Chapter 22, Psalm 22, reading from verse 26. Psalm 22, verse 26. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. Are they there today? I'm looking for somebody there. Hunger will not visit your house. Famine will not visit your family. Lack will not visit your family. You have enough to pay all your house rent. Enough to feed on. Enough to take care of your children. Enough to educate your children. Enough to provide for the whole family. That new baby coming on the way The Lord will give enough to take care in Jesus name The meek shall eat and be satisfied They shall praise the Lord that seek him Your heart shall live forever All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord When they see the blessing of God in your life this year They will turn to the Lord And all the kindreds of the nations Shall worship before him For the Lord is the Lord's For the kingdom is the Lord's And he is governor among the nations In our nation he will be the ruler He will be the governor in our nation, he will put the people that will rule after his own mind over us in the nation in Jesus' name. Psalm 37, I'm reading from verse 11. Psalm 37, verse 11. The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace and look at verse 1 remember now this year fight not remember this year fear not remember this year follow on remember this year verse 1 fret not fret not no anxiety no worry no palpitation of the heart there is nothing that will jolt you because great blessings are coming your way fret not thyself because of evil doers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb trust in the lord and do good so shall that dwell in the land the security over your life and verily thou shalt be fed delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart do you have any desire this new year any expectation this year he will give you the desires of your heart Commit thy way unto the Lord Trust also in him And he will bring it to pass I will see that blessing on your face 
I will see it in your life. As we come across each other, we'll not see the sorrow of the past, we'll see the joy of the present time. And it shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not, fret not, fret not thyself because of him that prospereth in his way, because of the man that bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. Don't let us see anger in your voice, anger on your face, anger in your body language. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Fret not, fret not, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Verse 11, for the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Are they there? Where are they? Blessings are coming. Look at verse 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil day. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. They shall be satisfied. Verse 23, verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. This year, the Lord will order your steps. You will walk into prosperity. You will walk into joy. He delighted in his ways. Verse 25, I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging a bread your seed will not beg verse 29 the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein for how long forever the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment the law of his god is in his heart none of his steps shall slide you will not slide. You will not slide. Verse 12, 34. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. He shall exalt thee. He shall promote thee. He shall lift you up to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Verse 30, 37. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Your end, peace. Prosperity. Progress. Power. Security. Verse 40. The Lord shall help them. The Lord shall help them. From today, greater help in your life. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked. The hand of the wicked will not touch you. And save them because they trust in him. Fight not, the sin is for me. Fear not, thy treasure is still much. Follow on. Triumph belongs to the meek. You are going to get into plenty this year. Prosperity this year. Into security this year. Every drop of your life, every drop in your body is protected and preserved in Jesus' name. Joy. 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 Happiness upliftment promotion and the desires of your heart fulfilled in jesus name no fighting no fear no fretting follow on the best of life is before you rise up and claim your blessing 
Rise up and tell the Lord what a new year, what a covenant month, and what a great time the Lord has in front of us. And he's saying, you don't have to fight for anything. You don't have to fear for anything or fret for anything. Follow on, triumph is yours. You are going to have a testimony. I said you are going to have a testimony. Open your mouth and pray and talk to the Lord. The blessings of the Lord is upon your life.